I'm not proud of what I'm about to tell you, but they say confession is good for the soul. I clicked on a scam link. Yeah, me, that guy who strenuously warned against clicking on links multiple times in the past. I clicked, well, tapped on a smartphone, a scam in complete earnest. I think this deserves a little introspection and analysis. I'm going to explain what happened. Now, some people will feel inclined to call this explanation a string of excuses that I'm coming out with just so I don't have to admit I'm stupid. It really isn't that. I don't think so anyway. I mean, I did feel pretty stupid right afterwards. But here's the thing. I didn't have to admit anything about this. Nobody saw me do this. And for reasons we'll get to, there was no adverse outcome. I don't need excuses because I could have chosen just not to mention this to anyone, ever, and avoid being mocked for being stupid by anyone, at least not for this specific reason. But I don't think it helps to keep quiet, just like I don't think it helps to call it stupid. Sure, like I say, I felt stupid, but drawing a line and stopping there deprives everyone of the opportunity to be maybe a bit less stupid in future. Anyway, let's get to the scam. It was a text message purportedly from Hermes, a parcel carrier in the UK, saying I'd missed a delivery. The scam behind this is really common and should be obvious. In fact, I've made multiple videos warning people about exactly this sort of scam. The link goes to a fake website that walks you through the process of handing over way too much personal information, such as your bank details, which will typically be used in a later phase of the scam to scare you into handing over money, possibly lots of money. And this was no exception. It went to a fake Hermes website that asks for a postcode, then claims to have your parcel and wants to charge you some nominal fee for redelivery. This fee is a red herring and the site won't actually charge you at all. They just want to capture your personal and payment details. Now, I didn't get as far as any of that on my misadventurous click because my browser stopped me dead and warned me of a deceptive website. So I immediately realised what had happened and that I shouldn't have clicked. However, that browser warning only exists because vigilant people have already reported it before I got there. For a very early click on a fresh phishing site link, that layer of safety wouldn't be there. But still, the parcel delivery scam's so obvious, there's no excuse for falling for this, right? Well, OK. But I'm still going to explain, because as I said earlier, if we stop short of this, we perhaps miss a learning opportunity, or just to reinforce something we already should have known. So here's what happened. The plausibility of the scam link was helped by the fact that the text is reasonably well written, and does resemble an actual missed parcel notification. It's not at all uncommon for parcel carriers to have your mobile number to text you something like this, because often part of the checkout process of buying something online includes providing a mobile number for delivery notifications. The link URL, whilst it's obviously not genuine, does at a glance look reasonable. It's not Hermes' main domain name, but it's not wildly different from the sort of secondary web domain name that a company might use to run a subsystem such as delivery notifications. Also, I had bought several things on eBay in the preceding week, including one item from a seller I've used before and I know uses Hermes for delivery. And the importance of clicking the link was increased by my past experience with Hermes as a recipient of parcels, no shade, but sad to say, in the past when I've missed the first delivery of parcels being carried by Hermes, that's the start of everything else going wrong. A Hermes parcel that misses its initial delivery stands a far greater chance of subsequently arriving damaged, or getting completely lost, or being returned to the sender. It also happens to be the case that the item I believe this fake delivery to represent is something I really needed to get my hands on in order to start work on a project, so I was kind of itching to resolve it. And in terms of my own personal susceptibility to the scam, I'd been out walking the dog at the time mentioned in the message, so it kind of rang true. And having returned from that longish walk, I was physically tired and therefore not at peak mental performance, even by my own standards. So all of these things added up to me clicking the link. If this had been a more aggressive cyber attack, I would have suffered damage. Fortunately for me, those are comparatively rare, and it was just a regular phishing scam, which I'm sure I would still have recognised as such, even if my browser hadn't stopped me, just as soon as the thing started asking for my bank details. So you've listened to my explanation, or, if you must, my excuses. Does that mean it's just hopeless? Is it impossible to be safe from scams? Is that what I'm really saying? Well, no. I want to look at this in another way, using the Swiss cheese model of safety. I didn't invent this, by the way. For any kind of threat or risk, there are things we can put in place to try to prevent it. Mitigation layers. Except, because we're human and the world isn't perfect, these layers inevitably have holes in them. Like slices of Swiss cheese, the holes represent areas where the risk will get through and not be prevented. Now, we can reduce the risk by adding more layers, more mitigation steps. Most of the holes in one layer are covered by the following layer. And the more layers you add, the less likely it is that any threat will penetrate the defences. Except there's always a chance that a lucky shot will just line up in such a way to slip through. All we can ever do is reduce the probability down to some tolerable level. 
And the natural question at this point is, why have layers with holes in them at all? Why not just have a solid and impenetrable barrier that stops any threat? It's a good question, and there are two good answers. Firstly, because we're human, we're imperfect, it's pretty difficult for us to create anything that would be perfectly impenetrable. Especially as the holes in our defences are harder to see than the defences themselves. In order to try to patch these holes, you have to try to imagine something that literally isn't there, then create it. That's not impossible, but it's not always so easy either. And secondly, because the equation of security versus utility is always a compromise. I could completely isolate myself from all of these risks by never using a smartphone or email, never taking part in any activities such as mail order purchasing that scammers exploit to get their foot in the door. Essentially, I could shut up shop and go and live on a desert island. I could go and live on an island. And this would be pretty nearly 100% effective at protecting me against online scams. But is that what most people would accept as useful? Utility requires a relaxation of security, or absolute security prevents most utility. OK, so what can I actually do? Well, I've got some thinking to do on that front, clearly, and for this I don't have all the answers. I'm going to throw this open to discussion both here in the comments and, if you like, over on Discord too. I've given the advice don't drive tired in the past, specifically meaning not to deal with areas where there's a scam risk when you're too tired to properly make the judgments, and I failed to follow my own advice in this specific case. I guess it's possible I was too tired to remember the advice, which sort of makes the advice impotent. So, what can I do now to try to sew up this obvious flaw in my plan? Well, I'll be thinking hard about that, but I'll also welcome your insight and suggestions. I hope this has been interesting. Thanks for watching, and I hope to see you again soon. Thank you.